to our first Instagram Live, where I'm sharing our usual members only cosmic insights for today's super full moon in Sagittarius and beyond. Welcome. Let me know if you can hear me well. I have a mic on, but let me know if y'all can hear me. Give me a thumbs up. Hello, hello, everybody. Welcome to our first IG Live on this channel. Excuse me for my glow is hot in here. I have to close the window because of the sound. And for the view, this is my studio. This is my husband's side of the studio, but the whole studio is under construction. We are redoing the whole thing. So my side is a little messy. Um, and this is like also where the sun isn't hitting. So yes, you guys can hear me. Awesome. Let me grab something to drink. How are you guys doing? Welcome to these cosmic insights. So I put the finishing touches on them today and I'll explain what the cosmic insights are for anybody who isn't a member of our community. But I, I put the finishing touches on them today and I was like, this is too important for us to keep to ourselves. This is too good, too juicy of a message that I downloaded and was able to put into a sort of synopsis for us. And I think really useful to all of us right now. So I don't want to take so much time. I kind of just want to get straight into the insights. Um, if you're a member, shout yourself out. So these cosmic insights are super important. They're actually how this membership community was born. I started writing cosmic insights, which are basically a synopsis for every full and new moon, which happened every two weeks uh, back in 2017. So now it's been five years since I started to talk about the power of the cosmos. Look at me, I'm literally sweating. The, God, the power of the cosmos. Um, hey, members. Happy birthday, Ash. Yes, exhausted. I feel you. So I started writing these cosmic insights in 2017 after like going uh, on stories and talking about like, yo, like I'm learning so much about like the power, not only of the moon, or but, but about intention. And I've been working with moon rituals for a couple of years at that point. Um, and setting intentions and learning about intentionality as a whole and that's when i really started to my content started to shift because i've been creating content since 2013. Um, it started to shift from like just talking about personal evolution to like talking about spiritual evolution and how that has a huge part to play and then i completely shifted into mind body spirit wellness um life happened and these memberships were born um out of tragedy for me honestly you shift and you learn and you grow and you create and I really wanted to continue to gift these messages forward to um, to the people who were already receiving them uh, so I created this paid membership uh, service I am literally sweating balls <laughs> I got the window closed for the for the good sound I wonder if I crack it can you guys still hear me these memberships are extremely special so we have the cosmic insights as one of the benefits um, monthly oracle scopes which are also a fave uh, uh, bi-monthly soul circles which are amazing because it's where we come together to be in an energy healing environment where we I transfer energy healing where we have soul activations I often or not often but sometimes do um, activations on my personal channel on Melanie Santos so you guys can check me out there um, what am I missing? Office hours. Office hours. Uh, office hours are incredible. We meet every three weeks to just like, it's like a virtual hangout. We talk about uh, things that feel heavy for us and we kind of just dump and release them. And then we highlight the things that are really special to us, the things that we're growing through, um, the ways that we're evolving. And it's really like where we build community. Um, dare I say sisterhood, uh, because uh, all of our members are women right now, but the community is open to everybody. It's a goal. It's a goal. Um, but yeah, let's get into these cosmic insights. Again, they were too good for us to keep to ourselves. Uh, so I wanted to share them with the public and also for anybody who might not understand what we're about, uh, what this magic is about. So tune in. Today is a super full moon in Sagittarius. We're going to get into what that means and how we can use the medicine of the energy that's around us to really better our lives, to better our relationships, to show up fully as who we are and to really dive deep into our healing and our evolution, to really remember who the fuck we are. Coconut water, the best. All right, <clears throat> I haven't done this in a while. Let's get into this. During the last week of Gemini season, 
the first normal full moon in Sagittarius is over. Excuse me. Let me start over because I'm like, what am I reading right now? I'm like reading your comments. My moon sign is in Sag. So you got to listen up. Always look at like where um, the moon is always going to be full or new or whatever cycle is in, in a sign. Wherever that sign is in your birth chart. You can look up your birth chart on many, many free websites. Just Google it. Um, wherever that, wherever the moon is existing, or whatever sign the moon is existing, exists somewhere on your birth chart and has to do with something. So look at the astrological house that it lies in. If you remember, there's a cheat code to this. There's a whole section of this in your Cosmic Insights email that teaches you how to read this. But it's important. It's important to what we're meant to learn um, at this time. So if your moon is in Sagittarius, uh, you have a specific planet, a placement. Um, in this sign, your moon has to do with emotions. Your moon has to do with um, how you're showing up emotionally, how you're showing up in the world. So pay attention. Pay attention to where this lies for you. All right, let's, let's start this again. Let's get over this. During the last week of Gemini season, the first normal full moon in Sagittarius in over a year isn't quite normal at all, but still cause for mindful, soulful celebration. Represented by the half-man, half-horse archer, Sagittarius is the philosopher, the great interrogator, the evaluator, and the truth-seeker of the zodiac, and is associated with structures like law, religion, and medicine. You know, all the serious stuff that keeps us humans together. What Sag is energetically concerned with, all these things, law, religion, medicine, all these serious things, informs us about what this lunation is here for. As this super full moon in Sag opposes the sun in Gemini, shout out to all the Gemini, shout out to Gemini season, cosmic bodies like Neptune, Saturn, Eris, Mars, and Chiron all play important roles in our shifts. So let's get into the details and how we can best navigate all of this cosmic energy for healing, mind, body, soul, self-care, and divine alignment. Let's break down the opportunities at hand and what to be mindful of. The sun is in Gemini and it's opposing the super full moon in Sagittarius. So let's break this down. Two weeks ago, we started this moon cycle with a new moon, an information obsessed Gemini. And now we're in the middle of it, ready to release with a super full moon in Sagittarius. Last year, the north and the south nodes, the points in space that put pressure on the extra important, extra hard lessons that we need to learn here on earth, were in Gemini and in Sagittarius. So the lunations that we experienced in Gemini and Sagittarius that year were super explosive. They were all eclipses. This year, they're normal. Or are they? As the sun in Gemini and the super full moon in Sag oppose each other, the axis of information and truth are activated all month long, as astrologer Divine Harmony reminds us. Sag being the truth seeker, this lunation being a super full moon and a moon for releasing and one that happens to occur closer to Earth, which makes it a super full moon, making it appear larger and having a deeper energetic impl implication for us on Earth. This cosmic moment is detoxifying to say the very least. Specifically, listen up, this is where we get to the juice. Specifically, this super bright full moon is shedding light on all of the things people, places, and habits connected to us so that we can see what is aligned with our inner truth and shed the rest. Are y'all feeling it already? When it comes to mindfully using this energy to release, it's important for us to name the connections that we find meaning in. Whatever stands in between is what's being brought to the surface for us to dissect, learn, learn from, and surrender. Ask yourself, Every time I say ask yourself, by the way, for those of you who are not members here, every time I say ask yourself, it's going to give you a journal or reflection prompts. Members know this. We live and swim and breathe reflection prompts. I am constantly talking about ways that uh, we can reflect and giving these prompts that we can use in our journals, in our self-reflection, in our video journals, if you guys video journal like I do. But every time I say ask yourself, take a note, write this down. So ask yourself. What connections, we're talking about people, places, things, experiences, etc., are meaningful and essential in my life? And why? Am I attached to them or do they elevate me? 
That is so important. I'm going to say that again. What connections, we mean people, places, things, experiences, etc., are meaningful and essential in my life? Why am I attached to them or do they elevate me? How? Y'all could think about that one. If they are beyond my reach right now, which means they're not in my life, if they are beyond my reach right now, why? Why do I need to, what do I need to release in order to have this connection in my life? Now moving forward, let's break down the full moon and the sun squaring Neptune. So we know what the full moon and the sun are up to right now. But what happens when they're intense aspect to Neptune, the planet of spirituality and illusions? Let's break it down because this zooms in on the importance of this energetic moment right now. I think this is one of the most important parts of this insight. Neptune is nebulous. She's not shady, but she can be confusing because she deals in the realms of the unseen. She's a planet of spirituality. And when she's activated, she wants us to dive deep within ourselves and what we believe. As Neptune squares up with truth-seeking Sagittarius and information-obsessed Gemini, the energy pokes and pushes us to dive deep into a soulful understanding of what we want to hold close. This is not skim-the-surface self-care energy. This is literally about our survival, our alignment with pleasure, health, and meaning in a society that unfortunately has been built to tear this from us every chance it gets. Us tearing through society illusions like this one to know our truth is what this energy is made for, for seeing through the illusions that exist in our lives and holding our truth face to face. Now, what illusions are being presented to you now? Also a journal prompt. What illusions are being presented to you now? You might not even recognize them. They could look like this. Again, the illusions presented to us, the, excuse me, <laughs> the illusions presented to us by society cornering us into believing what serves a capitalistic colonial world and only serves to further divide us as a people. So illusions presented to us by society. It could be illusions projected onto us by those around us. Very important. A lot of y'all that are in this live need to listen to this right now. You could be presented right now with illusions projected onto us by those around us. Unfortunately, some of us, it's for, unfortunately for some of us, it seems as though it's some of the people closest to us. It's okay, excuse me. This, I just gave this little girl a manicure and she wants to blow. Please go and close the door, okay? Let me go through this again. Because this is super, 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 super important. Super, super important. Like, I cannot stress this enough. And I picked this up as I was writing this and I'm also picking it up now. Many of us are going through this era, this season of our lives where we're having to do this deep shadow work and having to deal with tearing through our illusions. Lots of us are tearing through illusions that are societal. I think we all are, especially if we're women here, tearing through illusions presented to us by society that's cornering us into believing what serves a capitalistic and colonial world and only serves to further divide us as a people. And again, the illusions projected onto us by those around us. Unfortunately for some of us, it seems as though it's some of the people closest to us or that we share the most resources and information with that may project their fears and perspectives onto us at this time. With Neptune opposing the sun in Gemini, remember the Gemini is all about information and communication and chatter, I would know. With Neptune opposing the sun in Gemini, be careful not to get into an info battle with these people, going back and forth about who's right and who's wrong, who's telling the truth and who's not. Be less concerned about what someone perceives as your truth than how you embody your own. Okay, I need to say this again. I, I can't, I can't. Spirit, give me a second. It's coming, it's coming. We're talking about, if you're just tuning in, <laughs> the illusions, we're talking about breaking through illusions, the illusions projected onto us by other people. So pay attention to the people that are closest to you. It could be family, it could be partners, it could be kids, it could be um, your work. Just pay attention. And again, don't get into an info battle with these people, going back and forth with them about the conversation that you're having, if they're projecting something onto you, that means that they're having a conversation with you. They're telling you something about yourself. We're going to break this down even further because I'm not saying to um, completely shut it out. 
But don't get into a back and forth about who's right, who's wrong, who's setting the truth and who's not. Be less concerned about what someone perceives as your truth than how you embody your own. Move with grace and compassion, even if it means walking away. Even if it means walking away. Something like this could be calling for a release that you need, even if you think you don't want it. I'm going to say that again. Move with grace and compassion, even if it means walking away. Something like this, a conversation, an interaction with somebody, could be calling for a release you need, even if you think you don't want it. Lastly, we need to be careful and be mindful of the illusions that live within us rising to the surface now so that we can face them recognize that the hard stuff that we learn about ourselves serves as a contrast to nudge us to dive deeper and remove the binding from our sight so that we can see ourselves for what and who we truly are and continue to move closer to our higher selves we finally got through that portion now we spoke a bit about this in our last cosmic insights for the new moon in gemini at the beginning of this moon cycle two weeks ago and it's important that i reverberate it now many want to live in their divine truth but most will not commit to bravely seeing themselves for who they truly are maybe not now and maybe not at all in this lifetime as sagittarius gemini and neptune collide and we breathe in the depth and the fury at their access know that we are prompted to work through our illusions to see our truth yes however we may not be prepared to handle the truth that we encounter this is super powerful energy that is injecting itself into all of our relationships and all of our connections in one way or another right now but it's important that we don't fall into its shadow and further avoid the work by staying blinded by the veils that have shielded us this is super important too and kind of what i wanted to talk about is because yes the illusions let's do the shadow work ah 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 but especially when it comes to illusions that come up about ourselves, things that we believe to be true about ourselves, ways that we've kept ourselves in self-sabotage, ways that we've kept ourselves stuck, the way that they come up now, they may be really, they will be really, really uncomfortable, super uncomfortable to the point that some of us may be like, oh, I'm not ready for this. My nervous system is way too shook. I'm not ready to see myself in this light. I'm not ready to do the work to align with my higher self if it means I have to deal with this type of trauma. Here come the sirens. <laughs> Every time without fail that I'm doing a cosmic, uh, a members only oracle scopes, monthly oracle scopes, y'all know there's sirens to like, make sure we're listening. This is super important. So pay attention to the things that are coming up for you. We're gonna talk about self care at the end. Never will we go live at 6 p.m. again. It's like the worst time. Rush hour, kids are awake. But yes, super powerful energy. For those of us that will honor the work as it's showing up through this energy, we are poised for nervous system rattling major breakthroughs these next few weeks. So I don't know who might need to hear this, but whatever happens, number one, Listen closely because as you're going through the shadow work and as things are coming up for you, as you're learning lessons, as you're coming into conflict, be it with somebody else or within yourself, you may need to remember these things. Number one, you are not a bad person. There's always room for improvement. Number two, you're not destined to suffer. Pain is very real, but it also affirms that you have the power to heal. Number three, you're not too late. You are not too late. You're in divine time for ultimate surrender always. And number four, conflict of any kind doesn't have to be dreadful forever. Yes, conflict sucks, but it doesn't have to be dreadful forever. Accept conflict as an invitation to embody your truth even more, to become more intimate with the person you're in conflict with, even and especially if it's yourself. Now, moving forward, Saturn, Eris, Mars, and Chiron are supporting our healing needs right now. So we just broke down the importance, the juice, the chunk of what this energy is doing for us. All the truth seeking, all the sifting through illusions that we should be doing or that we're going to be doing inevitably because we could not care. You could be listening to this right now or tuning in because of whatever reason. And you could be like, eh, 
I'm not gonna do this, none of this shit. Like, I don't even care. The work is gonna come. The work is gonna come, okay? If you set the intention in the past to better yourself, to align with certain things, to release what doesn't serve you, just even saying that once, spirit is hearing you, the universe, God, whatever you wanna call your higher power, your higher being is listening and is serving you constant opportunities and sometimes the opportunities will come in uncomfortable um, situations like these. So speaking of that, Saturn, Eris, Mars, and Chiron are supporting us right now. Let's break this down. Everything comes down to releasing what's in between us and our divine truth right now. So these cosmic bodies are supporting us in their own ways. Eris, which is a dwarf planet who represents chaos, strife, and discord is in harmonious aspect to the full moon. Now, Eris doesn't create discord. It more so reveals that which already exists beneath the surface. So as it connects with the moon in Sag, it pushes us into deeper, it pushes us to, it pushes us deeper into doing the soulful research and reflection about what we really believe. Pay attention to where your ego is resisting what you need and what really feels like junk right now. Pay attention to the new information that intrigues you that could even come through a conversation with somebody who you're in conflict with. Somebody could be completely bugging but say something to you and it's still acting as a mirror for something you need to know and observe and learn about yourself. So pay attention to the new information that intrigues you even if you don't understand how it applies yet. Everything is up for discovery on your journey to self-discovery. Now supporting this is Saturn. Love me some Saturn. Saturn, the planet of structure, stability, and responsibility, also karma, who is retrograding slowly in the cosmos. So when we talk about retrograding, a lot of us only know about Mercury retrograde. All the planets retrograde. All of the planets retrograde. And retrograde just means that it's spinning. It's um, spinning just slower in the cosmos. And when it spins slower, the energy that it emits, um, it basically has us and encourages us to move slowly within the energy that it emits in our own lives. So Saturn being the planet of structure, stability, and responsibility, if it's retrograding slowly, it's going to affect a lot of our foundational stuff. Hence why this is going on with our relationships, our connections, like all, everything that lays on our foundation, everything that makes our life what it is, this is supporting it right now. So as it positively connects with the full moon in Sag, we get propped up as we deal with these harsh energies while neptune remember that it's in this really important square with the sun and moon we just spoke all about neptune while neptune is the in the clouds deep idealist saturn is the stick to the facts realist and its energy is going to help us align with and understand these new perspectives as necessary on our journey to embodying our truth so while neptune and the sun and the moon are like deal with this illusions go into the unknown saturn is there like i got you sis like holding your back making sure that you really listen in that you're really understanding and taking in these perspectives again pay attention to the new information that comes up for you right now what new perspectives and this is a ask yourself a reflection prompt and a journal prompt what new perspectives even if they're hard pills to swallow for your ego what new perspectives tell you what you need to know and bring you closer to your truth? What perspectives does your soul recognize as a red flag for who and what needs to be released? Because not all perspectives are, I, I was gonna say useful, they're all useful. Some were meant to integrate and some are, again, red flags for who doesn't need to be in your life anymore. Lastly, Mars, the planet of action, is connecting with Chiron. Now this is really important because Chiron is the planet and the comet that orbits the sun that's deemed the wounded healer. We all have Chiron somewhere in our birth chart. So take a look at where Chiron is in your chart because it's gonna inform you. Let me continue reading because I'm, I'm talking ahead and I already wrote about this. Wherever Chiron appears in your natal or your birth chart highlights how we're meant to work with our pain to evolve and ascend on our personal journey. So take a look at where Chiron is in your chart. Chiron often gets a bad rap, but it reminds us of our ability to transmute our pain into healing personally and within the world. Chiron is the one that lets us know this is how you can turn your pain into personal power. In Aries, Chiron has been in Aries since, since 2018, Chiron has been urging us to own our soft spots and blaze through the barriers that we've built around our wounds so that we can address the who, what, when, and how of our emotional gashes, aka get to the truth 
that our wounds exist around. Like I said earlier, all of this is bound to shake up our nervous system. So take gentle care of yourself so that you can have the capacity to take action on your healing. With that said, let's talk about self-care. I'm going to keep this short and simple. Taking care of our nervous systems is a non-negotiable right now. It is an absolute must. Even if you're the type of person that can do hard things over and over and over without being phased, a full moon moment like this can and will tear you up when you're least expecting it. If we're tuning into Gemini and Sag energy when we're talking about self-care, this can look like going on a private quest for, all, for what all of this means. I'm talking about reading books, listening to podcasts, and watching all of the self-help things that have to do with what you're discovering on your journey right now. We're doing that right now in our membership book club. We're talking about abundance and money and money wounds and all these good things. But don't give yourself healing fatigue. Pay attention to your body. Are your shoulders tight? And I want you to scan as I'm saying these things. Scan yourself right now and answer these questions for yourself. Are your shoulders tight? Can you barely breathe when you speak? Can you barely breathe? Is your sleep a little shitty? Are you moody? No appetite, increased appetite, racing thoughts, burnt out. These are all signs that the body is sending us to let us know that it needs rest, replenishment, and recreation. Do not skimp on any of these right now. What am I doing? To get by this cosmic season, lots of nervous system nourishing kundalini yoga, focused breath work, having private dance parties. I had three today, having private dance parties when my brain starts to feel like it's too much, eating less sugar, more greens, and hydrating AF. All zodiac signs rule parts of the body. Gemini rules our hands, arms, and lungs and Sagittarius rules the hips and the thighs. These parts of the body can retain a lot of traumatic energy, which we can encounter as we're deep into this truth-seeking shadow work. So set the intention for release and restoration and tune into some hip opening exercises and breath work on YouTube. To finish this off, this moment is one of crucial metamorphosis. So remember who the fuck you are an energy being embodying the entire universe within. So do not miss a thing. Don't dismiss a thing. See everything and everyone as an instrument. Let me say that again, because we're gonna finish off here, we're gonna close off here. Do not dismiss a thing right now. See everything and everyone as an instrument bringing you closer to healing your way through to who you really are. When the going gets rough, Remember that you manifested this opportunity to shift into your greatest being. I'm going to say that again. When the going gets rough, when you are your lowest, when you just had a really difficult conversation, when you're tired of having to do this shadow work, when you're tired of having to be so self-aware, when you're tired of having to build uh, this harmonious relationship with your ego, remember that you manifested this opportunity to shift into your greatest being. So proceed with grace the end how are we feeling did anything come up for y'all as i was reading that if you're a member of course that email is has been sent to you it's also in the member portal uh, but what's coming up for y'all i'll take a few questions before i drop off and go take care of my four-year-old um but let me know how that landed needed that perspective shift i'm glad to offer it <laughs> with all the smoke all the smoke came with love. Yeah, thank y'all so much for tuning in. This is again our first live. So we have a question here. How do you do shadow work, right? Because shadow work is a really, um, it's just a term that everybody uses now and nobody really talks about like uh, what to do or on the flip, everybody talks about just one way to do it. Shadow work, we're doing it all the time if we're really being aware of our actions and reactions. Shadow work is a term that basically is an umbrella term for us being aware of not only our light and our love and how we're you know, meant to like ascend and align, but also the not so good stuff, our shadow. So while we're like being directed to spirituality and we're like, praying and meditating and doing all this stuff we also have to pay attention to what's coming up 
as a result of us following the light. So when we think about shadow work, don't overcomplicate yourself. It can be done in many ways. It can be done in like you listening to me read this and something coming up for you and being like, that kind of resonated with me and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Let me go and take that to my journal. Journal is, journaling is a great way to really dive into your shadow work. Let me take that truth into my journal and really write about it and see what comes up for me. Taking anything that feels uncomfortable to a journal is an amazing way to do shadow work. I personally, and I've shared this so many times in the past, um, I do journal. However, one of my favorite ways to do things in the instant is to video record myself. So I have like endless um, videos of myself just like breaking things down for myself. Uh, one, as a neurodivergent person, who just like my brain is different sometimes I can't get the thoughts down in words I just need to record myself even if it just means I'm crying on screen for me um, and I keep it I have a uh, journal app I use day one this is not sponsored I talk about them all the freaking time um, they're amazing I've had the day one for a couple of years now and it houses all my written journal um, entries as well as my video ones as well as pictures and voice notes and all sorts of things so I say that to say one of the easiest ways that we can do shadow work is to take all of our uncomfortable things all of our conflicts anything that's coming up for us and just write record get it out record it in some way put it down in some way and sift through it one of the most important things that i can say about this because i realize that a lot of people don't journal honestly is to journal honestly don't write as if somebody's gonna read this as if this is gonna go into a time capsule it's so important to be honest you don't need punctuation you don't need to know how things are spelled get it out just get it out be honest with yourself uh, be honest about what's coming up for you even if it's scary to see because i think that's one of the most important parts about journaling and recording and just like putting things down on paper or in my case um into my phone into my technology is seeing it in front of you it makes things more alive it makes things tangible so that you can deal with them so journaling is a great way to do shadow work if any of y'all want to share how you do shadow work another great way to do shadow work is working with somebody working with somebody like a counselor or a therapist um reflecting with somebody that you care about somebody that you trust one of my favorite ways that i do shadow work with my partner is with my partner we have friday night meetings with each other uh where we break down you know what we're feeling about ourselves what we're feeling about each other we're just doing our like relationship shadow work together definitely recommend it if you um, are in partnership with somebody um but just like talking to somebody that you trust is a really great way to also just like sift through your shadows but it's basically just like being aware and being aware not only of the light and the love and the beautiful stuff but also of the shadow works um of the shadows us as a community, we are constantly doing shadow work with each other. Actually, one of the main reasons why I set up office hours as an, as an offering for us as one of our member benefits is so that we can do shadow work live. So that we can talk about the shitty stuff, the kind of like uncomfortable things, the things that are coming up for us and talk about it as a community because you'll be surprised what one person is going through, another person might be going through and might not have the answers. And not that we're looking for the answers, but we're more so looking at other people's perspective which is super again valuable so we're constantly doing shadow work together either alone through these cosmic insights that i just read or again in community doing it together i started using the voice memos to journal yes i love it before i had day uh, day one the day one app i used to just use my voice memos on my phone which is another option and also use the notes app um in my iphone to just like journal the best it's just the best Anybody else have, I'll take one more question before we tune out, since I know it's dinner time, it's also dinner time for me. Um, but thank y'all so much for joining me here today. This is the first live that we've done here. Um, if you wanted to join as a member and you're not a member, uh, click on the link in our bio or visit melaniesantos.co slash membership. You get seven days free uh, so to poke around and check things out. Um, well, we would love to have you. We actually have our first in-person events of the year coming up. On June 25th, we're having a healing hangout, a picnic uh, in Central Park in New York City. Yes, thank you all for being here. Thank you all for thanking me for holding space. I'm always just willing to. Um, so if you're interested in like getting together, meeting us in person, having these real conversations and really just being in community, I think is really important. Just aside from all the work that we've been talking about here, is just to be together. We, we are, again, in crucial times right now. Um, we're just, society's not there for us. It's, it's built to tear us down and sometimes it works. 
Um, so to have backup, to have a platform where you can go on 24 seven to just like write however you're feeling, if, even if we're not meeting on Zoom, even if we're not meeting in person is super important for me to offer. Um, so thank you to all of you who are members, who have been members since 2019 when we launched the membership community. I love y'all. Oh, thank you. Basically, y'all need to join this membership. I've been part of it for almost a year and it's been life changing. That is amazing to read, Julie. Gotti, love this membership. Thank you. Okay, we got one question here from Demetria Diana. Tips for discipline when you continuously when you continually start shadow work but don't keep up consistently. Well, listen. The shadow work will keep you consistent because when you're not doing it, when you're not being aware, you just continue to get into more conflicts. One of the or not conflicts, but just uncomfortable situations that become confusing for you instead of being aware of what's happening. So one of the analogies that I use a lot in our community, and y'all will know this, is the pebble and the boulder, right? The universe will throw you a little pebble. Are you listening? You feel it on your shoulder. You just be like, eh, I'll do a little shadow work and then I'll forget, right? Eh, it's okay. I, I think I, I could get through this one. And then the universe will send you a bigger rock and you'll be like, oh, I got to do a little bit more shadow work until you continue to ignore it and it'll send you that big ass boulder and it'll knock you over. And it's at that point like where some people suffer, get depressed, get anxious, don't understand. Oh my God, my life is coming down on me. And when you sit and you reflect and you look in retrospect, this has been happening for a long time. We've just ignored it or didn't even have the resources or the capacity to realize that it was happening all along. So in that in that sense like the, the shadow work will just keep you on point um also make sure that you're doing it in a way that you like if you don't like to journal don't force yourself to journal you know this is not like i think one of the things and we'll definitely have this conversation a lot more publicly we're definitely having it in the community now is a lot of what's been lost in spirituality and in personal growth is fun pleasure and this should be pleasurable. One of the most important aspects, two of the most important aspects of spirituality and of growth, personal growth evolution is fun, pleasure, curiosity. If you're not curious, if you're doing something because somebody else tells you to do it, if you're doing something because it feels like it's cool, if other people say it works for them and it doesn't work for you, then don't do it. So if you find yourself getting into doing the work, right? Shadow work, doing the work, and you feel like it's not working for you or you feel like you can't keep up with it, if it's not a timing thing, because I know some of us are busy, you already knew what happened. My four-year-old walked into the room 17 times to ask for God knows what. Um, if it's not a timing thing and it's just a you thing, pay attention to that. There's shadow work in that as well. Why am I forcing myself to do to you know continue with a practice that I don't really like? Then don't do it. You know, some people may do shadow work by like listening to music. Maybe you listen to a song that really gets your mind thinking and really gets you to like dissect what's going on within you. Maybe for you it's dance and it's movement. Maybe that's how you process your thoughts. But it's basically the processing of what's going on in your life that feels really uncomfortable. Appreciate you. It takes a village and this is a great one to be a part of. Thank you all so much. With that, I'm going to drop off 6.50. If you're a member and you just tuned in, go listen to these Cosmic Insights or watch this recording. I'm almost a little bit embarrassed to post this up because I had to get up and deal with my daughter, but it is what it is. She always wants to be in front of the camera with y'all. Maybe we will have a kids event for the members or something in the future. Um, thank you. Shout out to Mel's Affirmation Bops. Yeah, I have a playlist on my personal channel if you go to MelanieSensos.co. Um, my Instagram page and go to the link in my bio all my Spotify playlists are there so if you're a music person and that's gonna help you process and really dig through what's going on with you I have I got a playlist for everything promise you that affirmations bops uh, so songs to vibe low to Whew, such a good one helps me process and helps me um, sort of just sit in where I, what I'm in my feels for a little bit and songs to vibe high to is also a really good playlist um, so yeah uh, I'm gonna go. I'm really gonna go. Thank y'all for being here, for listening, for tuning in, for listening to these insights. I'm gonna post the recording of this. So if you missed it, you can watch it over. If you're a member, I'll send this recording um, in an email in a little bit. All my love, um, and thank you for following, for following this channel. We don't have a name yet. It's kind of like the running joke. Uh, I just ended up putting MS community, Melanie Santos community, just because it couldn't wait. We couldn't wait any longer to have an Instagram channel. Um, so we're here. Our name will come eventually. It'll happen. 
Um, but thank you. Thank you for, for being here today. Happy full moon and the rest of Gemini season. Happy entrance into Cancer season. Happy summer solstice. And tune into the content that we have coming up on this channel. It's going to be great. Love you.